All right. Hey, guys. We're about at that time to uh, have our next session begin here. And thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Adam Watson. I'm the Digital Learning Coordinator at Shelby County Public Schools. And in our last afternoon breakout session here, uh, which thank you for joining me, um, we are going to be talking about Nearpod. So I've already asked in the chat room um, to please share your name and where you're from and your Twitter handle. So go ahead and do that if you can uh, while I kind of give you the intro and give maybe the last couple of people that are straggling in a chance to take their seats. So Nearpod. This is a tool that's a little bit of a granddaddy tool. And I mentioned that in terms of digital learning because this is my fifth year as a digital learning coordinator in Shelby County Public Schools. Before that, I was a high school English teacher, a classroom teacher. And Nearpod, a long, long time ago, all of five years ago, uh, probably had just started to come out. And um, I was immediately intrigued. It was probably about last year in the classroom. And it was one of those like, wow, this is really great. Um, it does work for free, although we'll talk today in terms of some of the things that you do and you don't get with the free version of Nearpod. Um, but I thought it was just really a fascinating uh, idea of making a more interactive um, uh, opportunity with student learning. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump in. Um, as far as the website, oh, I'm sorry, before I even talk about the website, let me just talk about the Google Slides that we have. Uh, there are some Google Slides <clears throat> that I'll pop in and out and, and show you briefly here in a second as I'm sharing the screen. Uh, but those are available and linked on our agenda. I'll make sure that right after our session, I will tweet out a link to them as well. Uh, the slides are just about three slides. There's not a lot to them. Uh, there is a moment that I'm going to use that as a visual way of giving you access to actually interact with the Nearpod, hopefully two if we have time. Um, today and uh, let you be able to jump in and see from a student perspective and also going back and let you see from the teacher perspective what's going on in the Nearpod itself. So um, uh, Nearpod itself, it's nearpod.com. That's N-E-A-R-P-O-D.com. It is a um, great website slash mobile experience because really wherever you can get internet access, you're going to have an opportunity to participate in the Nearpod. Um, you don't have to install anything. You can just go to nearpod.com in your browser. You can go on the browser of your phone. That should work just as well. They do have a mobile app that you can install for free on Android and iOS and all those platforms. Um, it's a slightly more seamless experience. Um, and certainly if it was Nearpod, was something I was going to do a lot of during a school year. I'd probably have students. If they have a personal device that they can interact with. Great. Let them install that app. It's free anyway. Um, but again, the good news is, is that really from a Chromebook, laptop, even from your mobile phone, as long as they can get to the internet and fire up a browser and put nearpod.com, then uh, that's all they need to do, and do that on the fly in order to join a session. Um, as far as um, what is Nearpod, um, the classic definition that I often use and hear other people say is that Nearpod is PowerPoint on steroids. And that's as apt description as anything. It is an opportunity. Um, where you and their, your slides that you have created, you can push them out to your viewers and you control the pace of that. So as I advance a slide, that's the slide that gets pushed to your screen, your mobile phone or whatever. Um, so it's got it by me um, in a live session. As far as, if it, that's all it did, I guess that'd be kind of neat, but that's Nearpod so much more. Uh, what Nearpod also has the opportunity to have interactives. And with the free version alone, it's pretty nice. There is a drawing feature. There is a quiz feature. There is a poll feature. And you'll see some of those things here in a minute. Um, the responses of those students doing that uh, interactive elements, uh, however you decide to space them along in your Nearpod, um, that data is something that's saved. And so at the very end of the session, when you as a teacher decide to terminate and end it, you're going to be able to have a report to be able to see all that data. And that includes the drawing feature, which is really neat because it actually creates thumbnails for every student or every person that's attended your session, the picture with their particular annotation or drawing on it. So even that data is saved and is part of your session. Um, Nearpod does allow you to make slides from scratch within itself, within nearpod.com, uh, once you create a free account. However, my finding uh, is, and what I give advice as far as best practice for teachers, is that they create a Microsoft PowerPoint or they create a Google slide, they um, uh, make it as perfect as they can, correct spelling, the pictures the way they want it, all that good stuff. Um, and then at that point, when it's finalized, is the point where you would nearpodize it, use that term, 
Um, the, uh, I guess I, I was just say that the interface inside of Nearpod to make a slide from scratch while it exists, it's pretty basic and, and probably not as fancy as do it outside and bring it in. Um, one of the things that I tell teachers, uh, especially ones that are a little bit reluctant, a little bit worried about as far as jumping into um, a digital tool like uh, of any digital tool, is it? you have you have slides, don't you? You have you have PowerPoints, you have Google Slide. Ninety nine percent of them do. I say, you know what? That's probably some excellent content. Um, but as we're trying to move from the lecture model from teacher centered teaching uh, to student centered teaching, um, what is a transition way that we can kind of get you from just you know stage on the stage and de delivering a lecture with slides that you probably have perfected over the last ten years? But how can we take that and make it where it's a little bit more of an interactive experience and you're really getting some real time data? From students. Uh, in Nearpod, um, once you get past a few of the basics, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, so I find a lot of teachers, it's a good stepping stone um, pedagogically from that teacher-centered classroom to student-centered classroom. But also in terms of a digital tool, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and I mentioned that, you know, it's kind of a granddaddy tool. Um, it's something that I encountered in my last year of the classroom about five, six years ago. Uh, here it is. It's, it's mature, it's improved, it's added some things, and that gives me hope um, that as a digital tool, uh, it's sticking around, so it's kind of worth that investment. Okay, so with all those different things, um, one thing I would probably say uh, is that we talked about, you know, make it as a Microsoft PowerPoint, make it as a Google slide, get it perfected, then you bring it into Nearpod, decide where you want to add your interactive elements. Um, the uh, PowerPoint is easy enough to upload. There's a place where you do that, and then once all those slides are laid out, that's where you decide to insert a poll here and a drawing element there and so on. Um, for Google Slides, there's actually an extension called Nearpodize This, and when that extension is installed, that allows you to have an opportunity where as your Google Slides open, and there it is, you can hit that button, you log into your account through the extension, and it does the same thing, basically. It takes it and uploads it into Nearpod. Of course, you know probably uh, that in Google Slides, you can also do a file download as a Microsoft PowerPoint, and then from that point, that PowerPoint can just be manually uploaded into your, your library, into your account as well. So that's kind of the how as far as Nearpod. Um, for time's sake, I'm going to kind of skip into the what does it feel like and what's it like and make it more interactive for you as far as with uh, uh, you all as viewers. Um, the uh, one, I mentioned that there's a free version and there's a premium version. So since we're about to go live and try Nearpod, I guess the first thing I want to make sure to uh, tell you about is on the free version, there is a limited amount of how many people can join in a live session. I think that number has changed a little bit over the years. It's roughly a class set. Um, but if you had a class set of 40 kids, it might be too many. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, right now in the room, we only have about 17. That might change up and down in the next minute or two, but I think you're all are all going to be able to get in. Um, but uh, there is a cap, at least on the free version, as far as how many people can attend a live session. Uh, with the premium version, uh, it also gives you some other options as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, near the end of our, our, our experience as far as what the premium can get you. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. First off, uh, just demonstrate really quick our uh, Google slide here as far as uh, what we have as far as information. Um, I'm bulleting out some of these things, making sure I highlight them in today's presentation, but you can refer to it later. Um, what I want to highlight here is that in just a minute, I'm going to make a Nearpod go live. Uh, it's a relatively short one, but it kind of demonstrates some of those free interactive elements that you can get and do. I'm going to put a pin number right there where all the X's are. Um, so we're going to fly back to that in just a second once we make one go live. But I want to show you is the student experience is what you're going to experience about joining the Nearpod. What I want you to also see though is behind the scenes, what does it look like in real time for me to do a Nearpod as a teacher? So as I flip the browser over, uh, you're going to see that I've already taken a step and I've already logged in to um, my Nearpod account. There are lots of options here, um, and we're going to talk about some of those a little later, but the main thing that you want to probably go to first is my library, and that is all the different Nearpods that you have created. Um, there are some opportunities, both free and paid, to find some Nearpods in the store and download and add those to your library. Um, 
So again, some are free, some are some some costs. So just just to be uh, know that. Also, on the free version, your library can only be so big. Um, everything you're seeing here, I'm still under the cap for a free account. But at some point, depending on how graphic intensive and how long your nearpods are, you may eventually, on the free version, hit the uppermost of that. So again, just to be advised. Um, what I want to do is I want to make a live lesson of this particular PD example. So once I find it in my library, I'm going to go to live lesson. Now I can preview it if I just want to see what it looks like before I do that from the eyeball that's down here. But let's make it live. It's going to think. And this pin number is the pin number of uh, everyone wanting to join needs to go to. So what I'd love for you to do is, this might be easier to be, I might recommend something here. You might want to uh, grab your mobile phone or a tablet that's nearby um, and experience it that way. That's your call. Uh, if you feel savvy enough, you could just simply open up another tab, go to nearpod.com, and you can flip tabs in between back and forth uh, from this YouTube video that's playing and streaming and uh, the Google Hangout and the Nearpod itself. But whatever works for you. Um, the live session here, URSDH, I'm going to make sure to put here. A little laggy here, I apologize. Oh, that's why I'm in view only, so hold on. Got to fix for that. And I'll keep that up for you. R S D H. Okay. And there it is. Okay. Well, keep that in there in the Google Slides in case somehow you fall out or your mobile, <laughs> you close a browser or whatever the case may be. Um, we'll keep that in there because you can join it at any time. So if you have to join back, you can. So URSDH is here. Okay. I've shared that code. And now here's what it looks like from the perspective of the teacher. All right. We have a welcome screen here. So if everyone on their device is in there, um, you are going to see that when I click on the right blue arrow here, it's going to advance the slide. So everyone's uh, slide on the, the participatory side is going to hopefully say PD example uh, Nearpod. Um, when you joined, it should have asked for your name uh, and some information. Uh, so in a second, when we start doing the interactive parts, I should see that happening live here on my side. So I'm going to advance the slide again. OK. And the question is, how familiar are you with Nearpod? Now, again, I'm letting you see the backside. Uh, as you are seeing from your element, students are not seeing what everyone's answers are. But I, as a teacher, can see the answers coming in, in real time, and you can see how that's working for us right now. So um, we have a not at all. Uh, we're getting a lot of I've heard of it before. Uh, I'm seeing those answers. I'm going to give just a moment for people to catch up and submit their answers and let that come in. The beautiful thing about this poll is that, um, yes, I'm seeing those answers, and I can make those really quick turns inside of a lesson and be like, ooh, I was going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem today, but now I realize that just based on this poll question, I probably need to do a reteach or something like that of the lesson that I did yesterday. So there's that. But again, through multiple points here, you'll see that I can share elements of the poll or share elements of answers and things like that through Nearpod. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If I click that button, what should happen on your side is that you're going to see the poll results. And if we were a class of students, we could have a discussion about that. Um, you know, were you surprised by that? Have some kind of good discourse about that. So that is one thing that we can do. I'm going to unshare that and go ahead and continue on our slides. Okay. So as we've talked about in Nearpod, you can certainly insert your different slides uh, into uh, Nearpod. And if that's all you did, it would be pretty boring. I mean, you just be all the only difference is instead of it being on the big screen in front of you, you're pushing it out to their individual screen. I would be the first to say I've seen evidence where that alone makes a different level of engagement. I mean, don't ask me why, but you know, when a student's two feet away from their own screen, I guess they seem to suddenly be a lot more engaged in the slides going on. So there, there is that to think about. Um, but 
what we really want to do with Nearpod is take care of these interactives. So we've already seen a poll as an example of that. Um, but they also have activities that the students can complete. So let's fire up another one, okay? You now should have a picture that was sent to you that you can doodle and draw on. And then when you're ready, you can submit that picture to me. Now again, inside of our Google Hangout here, you're seeing the student, sorry, you're seeing the teacher side of it. I can see in real time when these people submit drawings, um, uh, what they did. And um, so as I'm waiting for people to do a quick draw and a quick submit, you'll see a swirl happened uh, as far as the circling, and then you're gonna see the pictures start popping in. So as far as a drawing, you have some options, you know, as far as different colors and things like that. I don't want you to get overwrought about that right now. Um, to be honest, I'd rather you just scribble something really quick and just submit it so we can start seeing some examples pop in. Ah, Kay Schmidlin, okay, there we go. U of K fan, obviously. Um, now, from your perspective, all you've done is you submitted your one drawing and you sent it in. You're just kind of sitting there waiting for the next thing to happen. Um, so I want to give this just a few more seconds as far as you submitting drawings. You see some more coming in. Some great doodling from Mr. Danes. Mindy has uh, colored in the teeth of the wildcat. Sarah has circled the wildcat. But again, think about this from a teacher perspective. I'm especially if I'm walking around with my tablet or my laptop. Um, I'm excuse me. I'm quickly seeing in real time the feedback of how um, how are my students thinking. And this is a great way to show their visual thinking, right? As far as the pictures. But in addition to that, what is lovely is that I can share these pictures. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to share Mr. Danes, okay? From the teacher perspective, I click on his picture and I'm gonna hit the share button. Now what's happened from your perspective is that now everyone is looking at Mr. Danes' picture. But a couple of nice things are going on. First off, it's anonymous. Now, unless I say out loud, hey, everyone, look at Mr. Danes' picture. No one knows whose picture it is. They're just looking at a picture. And that's true of all the different moments along the way when we want to share an answer or share a submission that a student is doing. Um, so there's great anonymity in that. And you can, of course, take advantage of that. No one has to feel ashamed or overpraised, I suppose, as far as, as their work. You can just simply talk about their work. Let's talk about their answer. Let's talk about their drawing, whatever the case may be. So looking at Mr. Danes, uh, maybe it's a house divided kind of situation. Maybe they li like a little bit of uh, the Cardinals and the Wildcats is what this picture is suggesting. Um, through the arrow keys here, I can easily, on the right and left, I can easily cycle through pictures, okay? And with a click, I now share a new picture with the UK at the top of the Wildcat. Um, again, doesn't say Cache Midland, but as a teacher can see that, know that from my perspective. And um, when I'm done, um, oops, share that, there we go. Um, so now you're seeing the Kay Schmitzlin picture. Um, when I'm done, I'm just hitting the unshare button and then we can move on. So I'm going to close this, okay? We're gonna move on to the next slide here. All right. We are at a point where we need to be thinking about our summer vacation. It is not any shame at all to know that you need to recharge your batteries as a, even if you're a K, uh, Kentucky Go Digital leader, <laughs> we all need to recharge those batteries. So um, answer just really quick. You can just tell me a name of a place. What is your destination for a dream vacation? Now, again, from your perspective, you just see the question. You see a text box where you can type in what you want to say. On the cast here, on the Hangout, you can see what it looks like from the teacher perspective. And again, it's awesome. We're seeing in real time what people are saying. You're seeing in the right-hand corner here where it says participation and the percentage. You're seeing, you know, well, how many people that are in your session right now are actually giving you an answer. Um, as you get near 80, 90, 95%, you can see, oh, who's, who's lagging behind and maybe needs a little bit of a nudge in order to make sure that they submit too. Um, so we have a few people that have no answer, but they're coming in slowly but surely. And again, we have this share button. So this isn't a terribly complicated answer to, to start a discourse, but if I want to push that out, just like I did the images, I could go over here to the right side and uh, I could push that share button and that is the answer that would pop up on all your screens. So uh, I'm gonna share Mindy's for example. What you probably see on your screen now is an answer that says any beach. Uh, it does not say Mindy. And he's still anonymous, so we can keep her that way if we like. Uh, as a teacher, I know that, but the students don't necessarily have to unless I say something. It won't show up on their screen. Okay. Appreciate the answer. You're all doing awesome, by the way. You're having good participation. 
Uh, oh, I see that Kristen, by the way, Laura, my cousin just honeymooned in Croatia where my grandfather was from. See, we're making friends here in a KY Go Digital session. Love it. All right, I'm gonna advance to the next here. All right, this slide is a collaborative board. Would you like to approve student comments before they are posted? As a teacher, it's giving me that option and opportunity uh, to moderate first. May not be a bad idea, especially depending on the culture of your classroom. But for this, I'm going to take a chance and trust you all a lot and say no, okay? So, um, through an easy system uh, as far as uh, kind of think of, of um, um, a way of just like posting like a post-it note uh, right here, you can go ahead and uh, share your answers just, just say, how can you use Nearpod in your classroom? Give us some ideas and some thoughts you have as far as how you think this tool could be helpful for you. Um, as far as the uh, immediate feedback, says Luana, I love it. Notice that people could heart what Luana said, or I could delete it if I wanted to, even after the fact, even though I didn't say moderation first. See how they're coming in, looks very nice. Okay, so here you are. Again, creating a conversation, creating discourse. Anything you can do about that to make it more engaging and digital and have students see each other's work and share each other's work is awesome. And again, we're happening it in real time. All right, let's see. What are some other things? You have one on iPads. This would encourage more engagement, says Laura. Exit tickets. I love it. Yes, because you could build in the exit tickets to maybe a couple of last reminders or, or final things that you want to really nail home for the students at the end of some content gathering for them. Or, uh, uh, direct teaching, direct instruction, facilitate literary circle discussions, very good. Um, this is a good chance as any while you're following with your answers to tell you a couple of things. Um, first off, we had a session pin at the very beginning that we shared with everyone, that's how one joined. That session pin changes every time you do a new live session, even if it's the same near pod. So if I quit this, and we're getting close to that point in time where we're going to, um, once it's terminated and the Nearpod stops, even if I fire it immediately up again, it's going to give me a brand new pin number. And that's just the nature of the beast. So that this live session and this pin number is only good for this limited amount of period of time. The second thing is, uh, this is a good point, is I need to highlight the difference between the free and the, and the premium version. Um, the version of Nearpod that you can purchase is about $120 a year, which I won't pretend is super cheap. Um, it is uh, a bit pricey. It might be something that maybe you can uh, talk to your department or with some people and kind of collaborate on. Uh, I'll just put it that way. Uh, opportunities to, to uh, get that taken care of uh, without you feeling like it's out of your personal funds. But here is what you get for the $120. We already mentioned things like you have more space in your library. Um, there are more interactive elements that you can do. Uh, you can get kind of fancy schmancy with some of the other things in your pod can do as an interactive element inside. Uh, everything you're doing right now and today are all available with the free version. I did that very much intentionally, but there are more options and opportunities, and I'll just leave it at the door for that right now. Um, but last but not least, and this is usually one of those things that, that pulls people over if they decide to, to buy the gold version, the premium version, is that you can do Nearpods as student-directed, student-controlled sessions, basically homework. In other words, um, it gives you an opportunity with a pen number that, that the student can fire up and use anytime they like, anywhere they like. Right now in the free version, what you're doing right now um, is all that you can do in the free version, which is I can have a live session. If people can participate, they can. When I, when I kill it, I kill it, and it's over for good. Uh, but with a uh, homework uh, student-directed session, they can do it anytime they like, wherever they like. And that data is still coming to you as far as their answer to the interactive. So it could be asynchronous, in other words, instead of synchronous, which synchronous is what you have to do when you have the free version. I will add, however, that the awesome thing here is that um, it's internet, right? So let's say you had that homebound kid who knows that at 1.30, uh, that's when you're gonna do your Nearpod or thereabouts at the beginning of your fifth period class or what have you. Um, as long as they have the internet, they could join you. Now they can't hear you. They can't, it's not like a video session or anything like that but they could at least follow along with the content, answer the interactives, and do all those things just like the kids that are sitting in your classroom. Because as long as they have the PIN number, anyone, anywhere in the globe could join your Nearpod session live. All right, I'm gonna move along. Okay, we're advancing to the end slide. And here's the thing, when we're at the point that we want to quit the session, at the top middle here, in the top center, there's a drop down. 
And that gives you the opportunity to end the session. And it also gives you the opportunity to go straight to your reports. Um, I'm going to end the session. Are you sure you want to end the session? I'll end the session for all the logged in students. Yes. Okay. And now it goes back to our library. But if I go back to the, and now at this point, you probably want to make sure you join back onto the tab or come back to me as far as the screen here, as far as the screen capture and the hangout. I can go to reports. And you can see, okay, let's go up a second here. Uh, you can see it has all the different Google, um, sorry, all the different Nearpods that I've done with the most recent one on top. And if I click on that, I can see the session times, right? So there was two sessions that may have been, um, let's see, the 11th obviously is the one we want from right now. I'll click that. And here is the session. This is nice because Nearpod used to be that you had to download it and open it up first. But now it's letting you see a live version of it. If I want to download a copy of this, I could download a PDF of this, and it's mine all mine. But it's it's saved in your cloud. It's saved in the in the um, the report section of your Nearpod account. Here you can see all the different lovely stuff. You can see here that uh, what was the participation in general, um, what was kind of the engagement. We can see each of those different elements. So for example. Poll. Okay, in the poll, how familiar are you with Nearpod? Okay, we can see all the different results, exactly how each person responded and the graph to go with it. On the open-ended question, we can again see that, okay, as far as who answered and how. On the draw it, I love this part, okay, you can see a teeny tiny icon, granted, uh, so if you had the PDF, I'd definitely blow this up to 150 or 200% to see this easier. Um, but you will be able to see how each person answered in this little image is the thumbnail, if you will, of the response. So I'm going to stop right there as far as report. I think you get the idea. But it's um, a great way of getting that data as far as after the fact of, um, of uh, the assessment, of, of how they did and make it a formative assessment in order to see where the students are at and where they need to be and where they're going. So. All right, I'm going to stop for a second and see. Um, uh, let's see, is it is the delay a YouTube streaming feature? Is there a large delay when doing Nearpod on the same network? Um, it is quite possible that because the streaming I know is, is several seconds behind me as far as when I'm talking, um, so uh, you're probably experiencing that. Um, the little dis dissonance is being created between me advancing slides on Nearpod and you seeing the uh, video and hearing my talk. On, on the uh, YouTube. So sorry about that. I should have probably highlighted that as far as that could have possibly happened. Obviously, most of the time when you're doing your pod, you're, you're again, you're doing it as a live session, so you're speaking to the people in front of you, most likely. So, all right. Um, what else is left? We got an, um, another thing is that I really want to make sure that I point out as we are uh, running down here on the time is that um, you have the ability to create near pods and uh, share them with colleagues. Um, so you can create a Nearpod and do that for your department or for a fellow teacher. Uh, there is a Nearpod store. I'll bring that up here really quick. That's in the Explorer section once you've logged in. And again, the thing that uh, you'll notice here is that there's a lot, there is a lot of free stuff, more than you probably think or expect. But a lot of these things are two bucks for this and five bucks for that uh, as far as to purchase. You can, of course, search for specific content here in the search bar at the top. You can also filter. So, for example, I want free virtual reality, which is what we're going to end with today, and search all lessons. Then it'll show us just that. Um, by choosing to hit that little button where it has a little arrow going down, that's the opportunity uh, to see, uh, to download that and add that to your library. So it's yours, um, so you can easily get to it quickly and fire it up for your students. Um, the virtual reality tours is relatively new, and uh, as you can see, there's there's you know some free stuff available that you can at least experience what uh, the uh, the virtual reality in your pods would be like. Um, so I'm going to here we'll just close out a starting one. 
We won't go very far into it, but I want you to at least get the piece of the virtual reality. So if I go into my library, I have one for Mars, okay? And notice that when I highlight it, it does give me an option that says student paste. That's that homework thing that we were talking about to be able to do the Nearpods asynchronously. However, I can't activate that. If I tried, it would just say, well, I don't have a premium account, so give me money. <laughs> so um, it won't work. It'll give you that message instead. But anyway, we're going to do a live lesson of this just because I know that the Mars session has a virtual reality part pretty soon into it. So we have a whole new session. All right. And again, we may have a little dissonance here between me talking and the YouTube and um, what's going on here with the Nearpod itself. But if you go to PQ, we go to nearpod.com again, you go into where that pin number, put in PQNHD. I'm going to change onto the slide just to make sure we're here. PQNHD. Okay. I changed our Google slide to reflect that as well. So we got that in there now. All right. So using that, you're going to jump into a brand new session. All right. Now, I've been talking all along, and I want to highlight again. It's however you can get to nearpod.com. If you do it uh, through a desktop, then that's great. Um, you can do it through a desktop, and you can even still do this virtual reality thing. Um, if you do it through a mobile phone, it might be a little bit neater and a little bit more interactive, but Nearpod doesn't care. It's going to allow you to join in and do these Nearpods either way. So whether it's your finger or your orientation of moving the phone that changes your virtual reality 360 experience, or it's the desktop and you using the mouse to kind of spin. And if you've worked with Google Maps and things like that or any 360 pictures, then I think you know what I'm talking about as far as using the mouse clicker to kind of drag and move around. Um, so you can experience it either way. So I'm going to advance this up. I ask you to log in. I'm just going to stop there. From your perspective, and again, you see from my perspective as a teacher that we're on this particular slide, it's going to start kind of floating. From your perspective, you can grab that 360-degree spheric picture of Mars, and you can move it any way you like, up, down, all around. Um, Again, there are several of these that are free. Certainly, there's a whole slew of other ones you can pay money for. Think about the opportunities for students to really engage them. And, I mean, I love Google Cardboard, and I love, you know, the idea of doing it, Google exhibi you know, exhibitions and all uh, expeditions, excuse me. Um, but that's, you know, a device and a, and a little headset for every kiddo. This is something that, in theory, they could even do from their desktop. So... You know, you're not limited by the technology or whether they have a mobile phone or not. You can do this from, from a laptop experience, a Chromebook or whatever. So, all right. I'm going to quit here and make sure that we have uh, in the last few minutes as far as any questions that might come up here. Um, so I'd love to hear from you in that session. Yes, it's going to kick you all out. Um, I will say really quick, as I highlight over here, that uh, the middle slide here in my Nearpod um, slides is probably one of the better short little videos that kind of sell the reason of why um, Nearpod is a great idea, um, how it's a it's a pivot point where you can change to a, um, a more of a student interactive, student centered, more discourse, um, just a different, you know, even the way that these kids are sitting, I love the fact that they're sitting in a circle and facing each other. Um, and so you think about, just not only just the tool, but coupling that with changing up your pedagogy and you're going to be well on your way as far as to uh, do some awesome things with, um, you know, digitally transforming your classroom. Okay. Whew. Man, it is exhausting sometimes to present. I am, I am definitely slowing down and filling my age here as we're hitting uh, close to three o'clock here. So, um, again, any chance, any other questions or comments or, or, um, uh, Anyone that's used Nearpod a little bit that wants to talk about the experience, I'm looking at the chat room. Looks like uh, looks like you're all just hanging out and hopefully enjoying it. Well, let me just wind up and wind down by uh, saying that uh, I'm very thankful that you've sat here, sat here and experienced this entire presentation with me. I hope that you've learned some things. I hope that you've got some excitement that your mind is spinning as far as different ways that you can bring Nearpod into the classroom or suggest it to some of your colleagues. And uh, I'd love to hear how you're using it and, and 
what you're loving about it or, or what you're challenged about it, frankly. So do make sure to find me on Twitter at, at Watson EdTech or uh, give me an email. And I'd love to hear what you're doing in the classroom. So uh, I am going to go uh, stop sharing here and go back to me. Uh, again, thank you so much. And I'm hoping that you hang in there for a few more minutes because coming up is going to be our closing session, our reflection circle. And I want to make sure that you don't miss that. So thank you very much today for hanging out with me. Bye-bye.